Hello everyone, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to talk about transverse stiffeners uh, for a shear buckling of a plate. Before that, recently my dear friend, teacher, colleague passed away Dr. Jabbar Barodi at University of Alto. This video is devoted to him on his memory. Assume we have a plate with the length of A and height of B. This plate can be a part of a, a web between two transverse stiffeners. First stiffener in one side, the second one at the end. And now we can assume that on the top we have a flange representing the I beam, for example, and in the bottom we have the bottom flange and in this example we can assume that the plate is under pure shear and there is no uh, compressive stress along the plate or in the vertical direction this is n x y n x y and as we can see the longitudinal direction of this uh, rectangle plate is going to be in tension and in the other diagonal we have compression we can sketch that this element is going to be in tension and in the other side it will be in compression uh, a direct method is presented in many good books and also potential energy is another method to solve this type of questions in the previous video we went through the effect of stiffeners uh, in terms of the plate which was under pure compression now here we are talking about the pure shear force we can assume that the buckling of this plate due to shear force would happen in a manner that one part of the plate goes to out of plane towards the surface that is sketched here and the other part is coming out it depends on the size of a plate for example what is the ratio between a over B as it is stated in many codes including Euro code 1993-15. Here we can assume that the first buckling mode which is out of plane in the general method is not applied and the second mode would happen. For that we need to write down uh, a kind of deformation of this plate in terms of X and Y. So for that I assume that this is x and this is y so here uh, we can write down omega as a function of x and y is omega zero which is a constant sinus pi x divided by a assuming that in the beginning in x direction and at the end the deformation is zero times sinus pi y divided by v meaning that at uh, y equals to zero and y equals to b the deformation is zero as well as the change in the diagonal direction for example sinus pi x divided by a minus pi y divided by b so if you sketch this uh, function you will see that the deformation is in a way that in the diagonal direction the deformation is zero so in other words if we solve this one to be zero sinus pi x divided by a equals to zero then it means that x equals zero and x equals to a it means that omega is zero in these two boundary conditions if we solve the second term sinus pi y divided by e equals to zero then y can be 0 and y can be b and if we solve or equal the third term to be 0 sinus pi x divided by a minus pi y divided by b equals to 0 then b times x will be a times y or let's say y is b over a times x so if we sketch this on our plate x equals to 0 representing this line x equals to 
a representing this line y equals to 0 y equals to b and then if we give x equals to a y will be b for the third one so here 0 and 0 and a and b so this line will be the solution of the third part so here we can see that what we assume shows that the uh, diagonal that is sketched here is under the tension as a result it stays unchanged so in other words what we assumed here represents the shear on this plate to be that way so in that case uh, if we sketch this uh, function in a 3d phase you will see that one part is going to be out of the plane and the other part is going to be out of the plane but one part is outward the other one is going to be inward so let's uh, sketch this in uh, matcat to see how it looks like so let's write uh, omega is a function of x and y and omega zero as well as a and b so it will be omega zero times sinus i x divided by a times sinus i times y divided by b times sinus pi x divided by a minus pi y divided by b and in the plot we can sketch this as a 3d so here is omega as a function of x and y are the variables and for the others we can assume one just to see how it looks like then we can select x and limit it to be between 0 and 1 and also we can select y and limit it to 1 to see how it looks like so here is what we assume for this buckling uh, if you look at it from the 2d you can see that it doesn't look like what we expect but if we look at it in 3d we can see that the diagonal is uh, completely in the zero phase and the other two parts as we sketched can go through uh, out of the plane in two di opposite directions also here you can feel this just to have a better look that is how it looks like and now we need to uh, write down the total potential energy equation we went through this earlier in the other video so you representing the potential energy or gain energy is 1 over 2d integration over the surface omega x x s square plus omega y y s square plus 2 nu times omega x x omega y y plus 2 times 1 minus nu omega x y power by 2 da and we is calculated according to the equation of 1 over 2 integration of nx omega x square plus ny omega y square plus 2 times nxy omega x omega y so in this example we do not have any compressive uh, load in x or y direction as a result these two are zero the only thing is writing down uh, omega as a function and find out the first and second derivatives and then take the integration so when we write down the total potential energy then we need to consider how to write the integration on the given domain which is here a surface and for that if the function is different from one side to the other side then we need to separate the domain so here we can see that the function is changed in terms of sign in the diagonal line as a result we need to divide our integration to two sub domain how to do it let's sketch the plate in a 2d coordinates x and y and here we have two boundary conditions in x Two boundary conditions in y independent from the other variable and we have the diagonal line so if you are going to take the integration of a function 
like f on da then as far as we have a boundary condition between x and y it is not a rectangle boundary condition as a result we need to divide this on the surface a as a double integration on surface a1 plus double integration a2 for this we need to write down clearly that uh, what is the beginning and what is the end of each domain how to do it so assume that i'm going to write da as dx dy so it means that first the internal integration is going to be done in x and then in y direction for this simply we can sketch one line in x direction and we can see what is the equation of the path where we enter the subdomain so here the subdomain pathway to enter to this area is this line which is x equals to zero and at the end of this domain we are facing this line the diagonal line which we know the equation was y equals to b over a times x but here we are writing in x direction as a result we need to find out what is x in terms of the pathway so x will be a over b times y so it means that in x direction we enter to the subdomain with x equals to zero and we exit the subdomain with x equals to a over b times y always the latest integration is with the minimum and maximum boundary condition it's always a number because the other direction has been considered the limit in for example here in x direction for subdomain a1 minimum y is 0 and maximum y is b so then i can simplify this or rewrite this integration first i'm going to move along x direction starting from x equals to 0 x equals to a over b times y and then dy in the y direction it is y equals 0 to y equals to b so this is for subdomain a1 similarly we can write down for subdomain a2 if we move in x direction we enter the subdomain with this diagonal line and then we exit this subdomain from this line which is x equals to a so here it will be a over b times y and it will be a again the second integration is always a number the minimum y is zero and the maximum is b that's how we need to write down uh, the integration that we have one uh, interactive boundary condition in our main domain so from here we can go through the mathcad and write down the equation it is easier if uh, first we write down omega x omega y omega x x omega y y as a separate function and then uh, combine them in a one total function so for this you can write the whole thing in one integration omega x as a function of these values will be the first derivative by respect of x of the main function and then this can be omega x x second derivative by respect of x i can just put this here and then changing the parameter from x to y and also we need omega x y meaning derivative by respect of x and y so omega x y as a function of the sign parameters is going to be omega x y now we can write down the function as a potential energy or a function of the potential energy it can be f as a function of the same parameters including nu so then it will be omega x x power by 2 plus omega y y s square what else plus 2 times nu times omega x x times omega y y and then 2 times 1 minus nu times omega x y power by 2 that's the function and then we can write down 
u as a function of x and y and so as far as we are going to take the integration we really do not need that one omega zero and a and b and d and nu so which will be one divided by two times b times double integration for this double integration we need to apply that uh, subdomain for example here so whether to write down first the frame of what we are going to do integration again integration the same for the other party so zero to b here x is zero to a divided by b times y and here zero to b from a over b times y until a yes and here is dx dy again dx and dy and here we have the function now we need to write down the v v is a function of the same variables except d and instead of d we have n x y so here uh, we can simplify two and two but i would prefer to keep the main format one divided by two times two n x so here it's better because we are in the same domain instead of this equation we have n x y times omega x omega y these two and it should be multiplied by two both of them to keep the original equation now we have u and we have v so we can write down the total potential energy as a function of all parameters including d u plus v so now we have the total potential energy and as we know we need to take the second derivative of the total potential energy by respect of the constant which here the constant is omega zero and then force it to be zero to find out what n x y will be so n x y critical it will be a function of a and b and nu and d so it will be the solution of second derivative of pi by respect of omega zero equals to zero and solve for n x y if n x y is going to be negative then we know that okay so it should be in the other direction if it's positive then that looks fine so now this is the solution for this example and based on what we assume to be the plate deformation in the critical situation so it is also possible based on the dimension of a and b that the, the first mode is not directly uh, as we sketched it can be especially if it is closer to be a square then the uh, most likely the first uh, shape mode is going outside the plane from only one side it's it's not happening that way but if you have a longer a or b for example if a is going to be two times of a then the first buckling mode might be more like what we assumed here so now let's have uh, some numbers for example uh, let's assume e is 200 gigapascal the thickness of the plate is let's say six millimeter b is going to be mm, one meter might be quite high but let's go with one meter and a is for example two meters what else new is 0 0.3 and we need to define d as well d is e times t power by 3 divided by 12 times 1 minus nu s square so then we can calculate what is n x critical for this value always kilonewton per meter 410 kilonewton per meter is the answer for this uh, size of the plate also we can check what is the value according to for example different codes with the given of uh, a and b you can find the equations in eurocode 3 and also in american standard so usually k of tau is as a function of 5.35 plus 4 divided by 
a divided by b s square and this is 6.35 for this value according to euro code and then we can write down also n critical according to the code is k tau times pi s square times d divided by b s square so here it is 280 kilonewton per meter which is far from what we calculated also we can uh, model this in the software and cross check what is the given value in the software i modeled it earlier and to avoid increasing the length of this video i just show the results so let's have the solution in our notes and i can simplify the n x y critical is 4 pi square d a4 plus a square b square plus b power by 4 divided by a3 b power by 3 so for a equals to 2 meters b equals to 1 meters for a thickness of 6 millimeter 200 gigapascal and x y critical is 410 kilonewton per meter using the equations from the codes resulted in about 250 which is far from what we assumed also i calculated the same uh, model with rpm and here is the first mode the plate is six millimeter the mesh size is 10 millimeter and it's two meters and one meter in x and z plane so here we have these uh supports which are free to rotate but they are the linear support they are fixed in x and y the other one is free in x and supported in y and z also we have the load as a line load 100 kilonewton per meter uh, in the bottom and here we can see that we have the 100 kilonewton per meter on the top and here 100 kilonewton per meter 100 kilonewton per meter so the result shows that uh, the load factor is 3.6 meaning that 3.6 times 100 is 360 kilonewton per meter so the solution of the plate equations are not very simple if you go with the direct calculation you might face a lot of uh, advanced mathematics if you go with the uh, approximation function like what we did and using the total potential energy equation then it uh, might not be the proper way here you can see that what we assumed was having the line from here to this point as the uh, neutral axis of the strain or uh, unchanged deformation of the plate but here we can see that in the PEM analyzers it is not happening in the uh, diagonal direction instead it's an inclined line somewhere in the middle uh, with an angle that can be also solved by the equation that uh, is out of the scope of this example here let's have the result in our notes if you are interested in uh, modeling with rfm please just write a comment then I will try to figure it out and record another video in that case. So from RFM, uh, load factor is 3.62 and the applied load is 100 kilonewton per meter. As a result, N critical is 362 kilonewton per meter. We can see that uh, with RFM, it's a little bit overestimated what we assumed the reason is that the deformation function is not really correct in the codes usually using this k tau uh, resulted in 250 which is underestimated from fem calculation and if we want to calculate what is the error of our calculation n x y critical was 410 and n critical from our fem it was 362 kilonewton per meter kilonewton per meter as a result the error in this calculation what we assume 410 minus 362 divided by 
362. So it will be 48 divided by 362. About 13% difference. If we go with the uh, code 250, then the error will be 410 minus 250 divided by 250. So it will be 160 divided by 250. Now it is about 64%. If we compare n critical from the code 300, 250 with n critical from the RFM, so the error will be 362 minus 250. And if we assume that the FEM is the more accurate answer, then the error will be 112 divided by 362 will be 31 percent so we can see that uh, in in our calculation the shape function is not uh, correctly selected as a result we are about 13 percent overestimating the buckling load compared to the code we are overestimated more than 50 percent and if we consider the code compared to the uh, FEM calculation, it is underestimated for 31%. That was the end of this example. Again, in the memory of Dr. Barodi at University of Alto, I wish him rest in peace. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.